savior John Schuyler already talking trash to Smith Garrett. Welcome to Matthews, North Carolina and the Cruise Center. Brad Stutz in the booth with Kevin Pierce and Kevin Pierce as Smith Garrett prepares for our anniversary super card battle cage and challenging for the worldwide television title. Quick cover only gets a count of one, much like a television title match. Of the essence in this opening bout. The first thing John Schuyler mentioned was that 10 minute time limit, only two, was that 10 minute time limit. And Smith Garrett is all too familiar with that 10 minute time limit, having been a former television champion. It's the same amount of time that you are granted for a worldwide television title opportunity, and that is what awaits Smith Garrett in just a matter of days at our anniversary supercard, Battlecade X7. We will be bringing you Battlecade over three parts over the first three weeks of January, and the Southern Savior had some very, very strong words for Smith Garrett before we went on the air. He basically said if he wins this matchup, he feels like he should be entitled to that title opportunity. Without a doubt, John Schuyler would make the most of that opportunity. It's starting to be 10 minutes. Well, he's saying 10 minutes is too much time. Garrett to the corner and Schuyler hits face first. Schuyler got caught. Time. Schuyler got caught crowing there. And right now he's getting his face rearranged by the former television champion and the man who looks to walk out same title. Smith Garrett. He put some extra up on that one. Heart stopper elbow. Cover two. And only got two. Notice how Skyler, as he kicks out, he doesn't just take his shoulders off the mat. He basically throws his whole body off of the mat, so there's no confusion whatsoever as to whether or not he kicked out. And this is not a safe place to be if you're either one of these competitors. On the apron, look out. Former television champion grabbing the Southern Savior by the ears. Skyler, perfect into the neck breaker, dead center of the ring. Cover two and only gets two great ring presents from the Southern Savior John Schuyler, winner of the 2015 annual Torneo Cibernetico, and he just planted the former worldwide television champion. John Schuyler, one half of the Bruiserweights, looking to just absolutely tear apart Smith Garrett right here, so that way Garrett's no, in, in no condition to even compete here in a few days at Battle K. Of course, we talk about 2015. Hold on, cover. You see the elbow right across the jawbone. We talk about 2015, where John Schuyler won the Torneo Cibernetico. Smith Garrett became worldwide television champion back about a year ago. We have to talk about the 2015 CWF Rumble. The rumble that changed all other rumbles in the future. You had Skyler on the apron just as we saw a moment ago, and Smith Garrett delivering just the right blow. Only look at Skyler, look at the way he put emphasis and you body see, weight on that cover, bridging up, but he can't hold the man down. That's his entire torso weight right there on the on the chest of Smith Garrett. And an angry John Skyler is not a John Skyler I want to find myself in the ring with. But as I was saying, as we saw earlier, Skyler was on the apron. Smith eliminated him that way and became the Rumble winner. Tonight, the rules are completely different, but Smith still wants to walk out with a victory. It was a career-changing night for Smith Garrett as he launched himself into superstardom at the expense of John Skyler. And here, what, uh, 14 months later, John Skyler, you gotta think, is looking to receipt Smith Garrett as as he cranks on the perpetually injured neck. We have talked about it time and time again in virtually every matchup that Smith Garrett has, that neck is his Achilles heel. John Schuyler just applying all the pressure right now on that neck. Not only does he have to carry around the weight of John Schuyler, but at the same time, the flow of blood to his brain is being sapped with every second that this maneuver is applied to Smith Garrett. Garrett fighting up and Schuyler cranking on the head and neck again. Schuyler laying on top of Smith Garrett. Look at all the weight of Schuyler on the back of the neck of Smith Garrett right now. So every time Smith tries to pull himself up off the mat, he's not only pulling the 200 plus pounds of Smith Garrett, but the also 200, Five minutes 200 some odd pounds, excuse me, of John Schuyler. 
We are past the five minute mark in our opening contest here on CWF Worldwide live from Matthews, North Carolina. We thank you wherever you are in the world for joining us as we are just a few days away from our anniversary super card and fans are still piling in to the Cruise Center. What a great intimate venue for live professional wrestling here in Matthews. Skyler stepping on the throat. Referee Charles Richardson has got to make him break before the five. That five count is oh so important. It may not seem like much, but when you're in that ring, those five seconds seem like they could be five minutes. Skyler. That's not going to do that head any, any good. And right now, John Skyler just picking apart Smith Garrett. Yeah, he is. Garrett is hurt on the canvas. Smith Garrett is hurt on the canvas. Cover two. Only got two. Smith Garrett having to push himself up off the mat to get those shoulders off. Skyler is paying close attention to every single kick out too and how each kick out seems to be less and less intense. As this match goes on. Garrett stunned him, has a chance to come back here. He has a chance to come back here. Does the winner of the 2015 Rumble match. Hard. Oh, right in front of us. You can see the pain on his face. Cover! Oh. And Skyler almost won it right there. We have talked about it so many times. Fans become conditioned that some big, visually spectacular move is what will end the match. It can be something so rudimentary as hitting the buckles. Anything that knocks the wind out of you like that can end the fight. Not only that, but when it comes to injuries, think of throughout the years how many injuries have happened and have sidelined champions that have had to relinquish titles. Uh, RVD years ago, well, he simply rolled his ankle and his television title shot was over. His reign was over. Something as simple as that. So Skyler knows the slightest little injury can put Smith Garrett on the shelf for good. And that's something that we have got to be mindful of here. Mere days away from Battlecade, mere days away from the biggest night of the year, should unfortunate injury befall anyone tonight on this broadcast, it could have huge ramifications for Battlecade as we see Skyler using the ropes every part of the ring to his advantage. He knows where the placement, wait a minute. He knows where the placement is in that ring, not only where he is, not only where his opponent is, but where the referee is and how he can use that to his advantage. Notice how the referee is looking at Smith Garrett's neck and has absolutely no idea about the foot of John Skyler. Skyler cranking on that neck. He, he may be looking just to wear Smith Garrett out here. And, you know, if they if they go the distance or if Skyler wins this matchup, maybe there is some credence to what he said. Maybe he should be considered for the worldwide television title at Battle Cave. He just rocked him right in the jaw. Smith Garrett has created distance. He's created space. He's got to make something happen here. To your point, not only do we have to worry about an injury, but oh, if Smith Garrett were to lose this match on the way to Battle Cave, does that injure his confidence? Does that injure his ability to think he can do it? Steamboat chops. A second pair of chops. Smith Garrett rocking and rolling here at the Cruise Center. Swinging a miss. He's got him up. Oh, angle slam planted him hard. Could that be it? Good ring positioning. Cover only got two. Great ring positioning there by Smith Garrett. Wanted to make sure Skyler was nowhere near the road. Notice that Skyler did not pop up off the canvas as he has been. I think he's been worn down here. Might be going for Smith Mountain. He loves to drop the man over the knee here. Go behind, standing switch. Oh, he hit the top rope. He hit the top rope and he hit the back of his head on the canvas. Skyler is firmly in the driver's seat. Oh my God. Huge DDT, cover, cover. Two, no, two and inches. That DDT capitalizes on all the time in this matchup that Skyler's been cranking and craning on the neck. He went for it again. Smith's got him up. Smith Mountain, no sir, created space. And Skyler heads to the outside.
So you've finally done it, Rick. You've gotten enough courage to call me out and to say that if I'm man enough to accept your request to come to Battle K December 30th to fight you for my PWI heavyweight title. Now, I would have the title with me, but I've been doing a lot of traveling lately up and down the East Coast, up around the Great Lakes, and I'm kind of giving it a break right now. So I tell you what, <clears throat> for your Christmas present and all the CWF fans, I'm accepting your request to fight you at Battlecade, not wrestle you, fight you. So get your tickets, Danny, Brad, Jeff, everybody in the locker room, if you want to be by ringside, come right on. Now I'm well aware, Rick, you have main evented that place more than anybody in that building. But do you realize who you're stepping in the ring with? A guy that's a former NWA tag team champion. An NWA international tag team champion in Japan. I've held the U40 title in Japan. Heavyweight titles all over the world. Tag team titles all over the world. So you're witnessing a guy that has main event in more places than you and everyone in that locker room combined. CWF, Rick Converse, I'm coming to Battlecade. <laughs> Hell's not coming with me. I'm just bringing the shotgun, this concrete, and the best spine buster in the business. So when I'm walking to the ring, get used to hearing the sounds of... Strong words from both champion and challenger as Kane Justice joins me in the booth. Kane, you are in the finals of this year's Rising Generation League Tournament, as is the Dirty Daddy. But with just days away from his RGL eligibility coming to a conclusion, Ethan Sharp has got one last shot at the title. If he wins, that's an unprecedented situation. I think that would force a three-way for Battle K. It doesn't matter, Brad. Whether it just be Dirty or Dirty and Ethan, it's a foregone conclusion that I'm going to win it back. Cover! Only two. Some surprising athleticism there from the Dirty Daddy. Not short on confidence is my partner in the booth, Kane Justice. Once again, we have the annual Rising Generation League Tournament. Kane Justice and Dirty Daddy are the two finalists. They will meet at Battlecade for the championship. However, Ethan Alexander Sharp's RGL eligibility runs out on December the 31st. This is Ethan Sharp's last shot ever at the Rising Generation League Championship. Cover, they're almost in the ropes. Ref Pierce counts it. We do have a precedent set for that. If a man should win the championship in his last year of eligibility, he holds it until he loses it. Another cover, only two. So with that RGL eligibility ending on December the 31st, 
if Ethan Sharp leaves tonight as the champion and he leaves Battlecade as the champion, the precedent has been set that he would hold that championship until he loses it. He would not have to be stripped of it. King Justice, you say it's not going to matter one way or the other. It's not. It's not going to matter one way or the other. If he wins it today, good for him. He holds it until Battlecade. But I'm not, I don't care. It's either one of them, but I really want it to be dirty. I've wanted to kick him in the face ever since I did it at the Rumble, and I want to do it again. Back at the 30-man CWF Rumble, your CWF Mid-Atlantic debut, and to your point, the very first man that you went after in your very first professional match was the Rising Generation League champion, the Dirty Daddy. Yes, it was. I was there when he won that title. I was happy for him, just waiting to put that cap a kick in the back of his head because I want that title. How do you like it, Dirty? Huh? Dirty Daddy face first into the canvas. He may be disoriented. He just took fingernails in the eyes from Sharp. Oh, missed a stop. Did Ethan Alexander Sharp. These two jockeying for control here. And it is intensely personal, I noticed, with these rising generation league guys. Why is that, Kane? Why is it these guys that train together, they come up together in the school, it seems to me like the rivalries become intensely personal very quickly in the rising generation league. I don't think you're asking the right question here. I'm mad because he's there and I wasn't there. He's been here for what, like a year and then I'm just now getting here? I've been training at CWF a lot longer than he has. I don't care if he's like a 30 year Cover, veteran. cover, only two. I was here paying my dues and he wasn't here. He was off in some other territory getting blackballed somewhere else. I bust my butt here. Why was I not in there? So what I'm hearing from you then is it is, it is some guys getting the opportunity first and others on the sidelines that causes these intense rivalries. Sharp may have just knocked the Dirty Daddy's block off here at the Cruise Center. I hope he did. I hope he breaks his freaking jaw. No, he didn't get an opportunity. He stole that opportunity from me. This should have been me last year. Well, it is you this year when the Rising is. Generation League Championship match opens up our anniversary super card here just days away. It will be King Justice. It will be the Dirty Daddy. Will Ethan Alexander Sharp join them? Good Lord. You heard the bone on bone contact from the Dirty Daddy, the youngest vet in the biz, Sharp, into the neck break. Excellent execution, dropped him dead center of the ring, cover, two, and only two. That's the thing, man, I've trained with both of them. I've been training with both of them for a while. Sure, Ethan has private lessons or whatever, but I know just as much as either one of them. I'm better than either one. And Dirty's mm. having such a hard time with just him. What if it is just me, Why him, and quit? Ethan? Why don't you guys quit? Good Lord, these two are throwing shots. Kicked him right in the face. Here for the Rising Generation League Championship. Cover from Shar. only two. Again, the Rising Generation League Championship for wrestlers with three years or less of professional experience. And, you know, you talked about being on the sidelines for a long time, and that's true. You were training for a very long time before you made your professional debut. But in the instance of the Rising Generation League, that plays to your advantage. If you don't leave Battlecade this year as the champion, there's always next year. There is, but that's the thing. I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on winning it now and holding it for three years, hell, I'll hold it forever because I'm never going to get beat. I'm better than anybody here, Brad. The most confident rookie we have ever seen. Swing and a miss from Sharp. Ripcord, no, sir. Sharp does not let him have it. Face first. Sharp going for the win. Plants him right on the head and neck. Cover, good move there from Sharp. Two. Excellent move from Ethan Sharp. Pulled the man out of the ropes. Of course, pinfall will not count with any part of the body entangled in the ropes. And Ethan Sharp is showing his frustration here. It makes me laugh. Oh, just finish him. Huge knee right to the jaw. Taking a page out of your book here, Kane Justice. I see that fire in your eyes. Ethan Sharp. Ethan Sharp may win this one by submission. Oh, great wrestling on the part of the Dirty Daddy. Turned it into the neck breaker. 
If anyone's gonna make Dirty Tap out of Battle Kid, it's gonna be me. We will see in the course of this matchup whether or not Ethan Alexander Sharp will make it to that championship match. Cover two. Ah. Dirty could not put a lot of body weight on the chest, and I think it cost him right there. <laughs> you want to cover the man as best you can, wrap him up as tight as you can. Dirty Daddy could not do it right there, and it cost him. And that's the lack of experience. He's been here for, what, 30-some years? I've been wrestling since I was a kid, and I know this. Sharp is swinging for daylight, but just getting rocked by the veteran here. Woo! Big dusty elbow. Sharp literally being held up by the ropes. Slam. Oh! He dropped the head and neck across the knee. Two. Got it! And it will be one on one for the Rising Generation League Championship. Just days away from battle, Kane. Kane Justice, you have a gleam in your eye. Yes, I do. And it doesn't matter what happens tonight. The start of battle, Kane, is going to have a twist ending. I got your number. This is CL Party back at the Battle Cade Control Center. And we now know the stipulations for the main event of the big night. It will be a firm 30 minute time limit. And while Brad Attitude cannot get disqualified, Trevor Lee can. If they go the full 30 minutes, or if Trevor Lee is disqualified, he will forfeit the Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight title to Brad Attitude. Also on that night, Chet Sterling will defend his Pro Wrestling International Ultra J Championship against Lee Valiant in a no disqualifications match. The pile driver has been made legal as Chet hopes to get revenge for being pile driven at Ultimate Survivor. Also at Ultimate Survivor, Rob the Boogie Woogie Man McBride was blinded by the evil green mist of Kabuki Me, and we understand that he is standing by right now with comments. Peoples, brothers and sisters, for all you peoples that was at Ultimate Survivor, you seen Kabuki spit the poison in my eyes. Your Boogie Man can barely see. I can't even see my grandbabies. They say, Paw Paw, what's wrong? And I, how do you tell a grandbaby that Kabuki has been poisoned in the eyes? But I tell you what, I'm getting better. I'm getting better every day, baby. So I tell you what, Kabuki, I see you at Starkey. Battle cake, Rob. A battle cake, baby. Cause the boogie man, I'm gonna split your wig. And I got something for ya. Woo, my sad. 2016 Weaver Cup Tournament Champion, Nick Richards, will face off against last year's champion and current holder of the golden ticket, Roy Wilkins. Pro Wrestling International Heavyweight Champion, Rick Converse, has called out C.W. Anderson, who has been walking around for months with Rick Converse's championship. And in the final round of the Rising Generation League Championship Tournaments, the champion Dirty Daddy will take on Kane Justice. Will you can keep justice. You can I love the power glove. Send me an angel. Season's greeting CWF Mid-Atlantic fans, and it is that time of year where all of the CWF stars collide in the annual extravaganza we've come to know as Battle Cave. And this year in 2016, the 17th edition brings forth a plethora of matches that I guarantee will quench the thirst of professional wrestling fans all over the world. Now, if you're watching this and you're wondering just who I am, well, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Maddie De Niro, and I am a former CWF Worldwide television champion and a former winner of the CWF Rumble. And on Friday night, December 30th, 2016, there will be no lights off, lights on, because I am officially making it known that I will be there in the new, new Sportatorium in Gibsonville, North Carolina, and I'm looking for a fight. Now, let's be real here. It's been a while since I've been in the ring. As a matter of fact, it's been a year. 
It's been since Battlecade 16, where I reformed Fatback Enterprises and took on the likes of some of the most dangerous men and women the CWF Mid-Atlantic has ever seen before ever. So who is it that I'm gonna be stepping into the ring with, huh? Who's it gonna be? You got, well, let's start at the top, the very top, and I'm talking to you, White Mike Jordan. Yeah, but I had to drop off this package to let it be known that not you or anybody else in that locker room is freaking safe when I step out of the power stream here and into the ring of CWF Mid-Atlantic action. Another guy that I might end up crossing paths with, perhaps, would be a man by the name of Ethan Alexander Sharp. You're not fooling me, Ethan Alexander Sharp, okay? That Stark Reactor Core technology that you have built somehow into your wrestling gear. I could be the man to make sure that that technology is in the hands of someone who knows how to use it for good and not for evil. Also, NBA champion, MVP, LeBron James. I can't believe that you have signed with the CWF Mid-Atlantic, but I read you in the results and you somehow are wrestling while you're practicing and playing NBA games. If I see you there, I don't care. I will flush it in your face with an overhead tomahawk. Nobody is safe. Battlecade X7 is going to have it all. And now it officially has the endless charisma to make history again. You can keep up with us at CWF247.com and follow us on Twitter at CWF Mid-Atlantic for live updates as soon as we know more about the anniversary supercard, Battlecade. Championships. We saw the Rising Generation League Championship defended just moments ago. Uh, Snooty caught him high on that one, going low to the body. Montana Black has got guaranteed the first Rising Generation League Championship match of 2017. Whoever leads Battlecade will defend that championship against Montana Black sometime early in the new year. Montana Black tagging out to all. Kilter, Rob Kiljoy. Pierce, what do the Ducks have to do here against the Sandwich Squad that are so much bigger? They have to divide and conquer. They got a double team. They're going to have to get rid of two on the apron and keep the one in the ring. That's their best bet. And they just rock big man Mecca and in comes with a blind tag, Aaron Biggs. Biggs is in. They will have to strike. Oh, look out. Oh, he sends the Ducks into each other. 
looking for. I was going to say, they will have to strike very, very fast. Oh, man, they may be going for the hero sandwich early. Woo! Smart move by the Ducks to get out of the way there. They jumped out of that pond quick. You hear the duck call going out throughout the building. Hold on, wait. What is that? The sandwich squad. Are they going duck hunting? on the big man. Oh! Montana Black takes both tag team champions down. Let's talk have, about that for a second. I have never seen anyone take Mecca and Biggs both off their feet with one shot like that. One shot, he took them both off their feet and Montana Black has made the difference here. We're smarter, and we're a family, and we're ducks. I'll be back. Big advice there from the coach, and Lance Lude and the coach. Wait a minute. The coach of the Ugly Ducklings taking every advantage. The coach, and I would assume. I told you we're smarter. You said you'd be back, too. I, I assume that taking any shortcut that, pre that presents itself factors into that game plan as well. The thing is, is we're ducks, so we don't care who likes us and who doesn't. Right now, these people want to cheer for the sandwich squad? A sandwich over a duck? I don't think so. Ducks gonna... like the bread from sandwiches, though, right? This whole conversation is making me hungry, folks. The, I'll tell you the, what. The, the bread. That's it. Oh, great, great drop kick there from Rob Kiljoy. Coach, you have got your men primed and ready. I got to say, everything that they have hit so far has been right on the money. Precision with every strike so far from both of your ugly ducklings. It's right on the money because plain and simple, these guys are huge, like I said. And the thing is, our game plan is to keep them off their feet. If they're off their feet, they're on the ground. If they're off their feet, they can't hit these big moves. They can't lift us up. And then we got Montana quacking here. We got our own big man. Yeah, last four. I got to say, this is a great pickup for you guys. I have never seen one man sandwich squad off their feet like Montana Black just did. Excuse me, like Montana Quack there you go. just did. There you go. This is a great pickup for you, Coach Mikey. Rob Kiljoy trying to make something happen here. Oh, he didn't do it. Come on, Rob. Come on, Rob. Woo, close line. Oh, just flip him inside out. Snooty Fox is in. And man, he may run through everybody. Look out. And now the monstrous Mecca is back in. Now pump kick from Killjoy. Once again, I gotta give it to you, Mikey. Every strike has been right on the money. Every strike counts because we're trying to prevent this from happening. There it is, right there. Right in the mouth. He just strike in and Enziguri, but Pearson couldn't take him down. He just, he just got clocked in a jaw and still is only down. Well, now, wait a minute. Oh, no. They need, they 
need my help. They need my help. What? Rude Awakening! Got him! They finally take the big man down! Killjoy up top! Looking to finish him off! Dangerous! Watch the double stop! Oh, crushed him! No way! Joshua Cutshaw. Joshua, we have not seen you since you went to war with Trevor Lee, and next week you're taking on Nick Richards. How are you feeling? How am I feeling? How am I feeling? You know, a lot of people ask me, Josh, where did you go after that match? You disappeared from CWF. What happened? Let me tell you this. That really got in my head. Trevor Lee thought I had him. He claims to be the real man of CWF. I was coming to take that title and his CWF world title. He got the better of me. Touche. Now I get knocked back down. I have to start back over. It's okay, I had to rebuild my mind a little bit too. I'm starting with Nick Richards. He's gonna find out why I'm gonna go straight to the top again and I'm gonna get that title back from Trevor Lee. And that's real. Oh, yeah. The Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium is the number one venue for live pro wrestling in all of the Carolinas. But did you know that you can also rent the Sportatorium for all of your anniversaries, fundraisers, and live pro wrestling birthday parties? Check us out at CWF247.com to find out more about how you can have your event right here at the Sportatorium. The following contest is scheduled for one fall with a 30 minute time limit and it is for the Pro Wrestling International Ultra J Championship.
I gotta be honest, Kevin Pierce, I didn't think the coach had any friends, but apparently his best friend is the former Rumble winner, the former Weaver Cup champion, this year's Tornado Cybernetico winner, the only Grand Slam champion in CWF history, the technical wizard Roy Wilkins, in our main event this week, squaring off against the Ultra J champion Chet Sterling, Kevin Pierce, Ultra J championship, one of the only accolades that Roy Wilkins has never held. You gotta wonder if that eats at him too, and you gotta be careful what you say about the coach, not necessarily because I'm worried about him coming over here trying to hurt us or anything. I really don't want him that close to us to begin with, and this is a little closer than I wanna be. And right now, Roy Wilkins is trying to figure out what Chet Sterling's game is gonna be. A lot of conversation this week about whether or not Wilkins made weight to challenge for the Ultra J Championship. Coach Jim and I has produced documentation that Wilkins has made weight. And for those fans that are not used to CWF and this is the first episode they may be watching, what is that weight limit? Right, well, it looks like the, in the industry standard is gonna be 205. Mm -hmm. So coming up here in 2017, we may wanna revisit. Uh, we had it at about 220. We may need to revisit that. If the industry standard is gonna become 205, uh, we may be in a situation here coming up where if that rule change does take into effect, Wilkins would not be allowed to challenge for the championship without putting weight. When the title was established years ago, we went with 220, but however, if the industry standard is going to be 205, uh, that's been a conversation. We talked about it back at Moment of Magic. There's been a lot of conversation about possibly lowering the weight limit, focusing on wrestlers, you know, 200 pounds or less, quite frankly. I'm sure the coach would have no problem telling us all that that weight restriction is the only reason that Roy Wilkins has not been an international Ultra J champion. Wilkins still sizing up the champion. We thank you wherever you are in the world for joining us here on CWF Worldwide. What has been a very eventful hour. Dirty Daddy has retained the Rising Generation League Championship. We'll defend against Kane Justice coming up at Battlecade. We saw Smith Garrett just eke past John Schuyler. He's pulling Roy's As Smith Garrett prepares to challenge for the Worldwide Television Championship. And of course, both of these men currently in the ring are slated for other competition at Battlecade as Chet Sterling is slated to defend his Ultra J Championship against Lee Valiant. No disqualification. Pile drivers are legal. And Roy Wilkins is slated to face Nick Richards. I gotta believe that if Wilkins were to leave Matthews, North Carolina, tonight as the champion, I gotta believe the matches would stay intact. Sterling and Valiant would become a non-title match and Wilkins and Richards would become a title bout. So someone who stands to gain a lot here is Nick Richards. Somebody who stands to lose a lot is Lee Valiant. A big part of the complexion of Battle K this year could change in an instant with this very match. And you gotta understand, Chet wants to walk into Battlecade as the Ultra, or excuse me, International Ultra J Champion. And Roy Wilkins would love to add another trophy to that extremely illustrious trophy shelf. I heard the coach was talking about adding another wing in his, in his trophy case for Roy Wilkins' accolades. He has won just about everything there is to win. Sterling now controlling the head, of course, Many of you saw Chet Sterling make his TNA Impact debut just days ago as part of Total Nonstop Deletion. He was driven through a table by Jeff Hardy under the guise of Itchweed. And you gotta wonder, Pierce, you know, is Chet Sterling 100%? He, he was pile driven on his neck by Lee Valiant weeks ago. He was, you know, beaten up by Jeff Hardy back at Impact Wrestling at Total Nonstop Deletion. It has been a very physical couple of months for Sterling. 
And it, if Wilkins can control the pace against an opponent who is not at 100%, Wilkins will, in fact, shake up Battlecade. He will win this championship. Well, I think it's in Roy Wilkins' advantage right now, the lighter schedule that he maintains. He's got less wear and tear on his body. Unlike, to your point, Chet Sterling, who just in competition with Jeff Hardy. Who absolutely on fire right now. But you got to wonder, to the point we had earlier with Smith Gary, do you want to preserve as much as you can with Battle Cade just days away? What do you want to risk tonight here in Matthews and possibly not have for yourself at Battle Cade? Chet Sterling controlling the challenger, and you're seeing it right here in front of our very eyes. Whenever you're in there with one of the All-Stars, whether you want to or not, you have to pay attention to the coach. He draws your attention. He drew Chet Sterling's attention just now as that whistle rings out throughout the cruise center. Can we please do something about that? It's, it's way too close to us. There you go. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. We're at the top. Sterling. All the air driven right out of Wilkins right there. Trying to make going something happen here on the rope. Oh, beautiful shoulder block. This could be it. Cover two. I got to say, Sterling does not have that spring in his step that we are accustomed to seeing. I don't know if it's the schedule. I don't know if it is still feeling the effects of that brutal pile driver from Lee Valiant. But Chet Sterling clearly does not have that spring in his step that we have typically seen from the Ultra J champion. Wilkins, so good. Oh, almost went right into oh, a wow. spectator. He almost got himself a face full of slice of pizza there. Wilkins almost went right into a spectator. Wait they a minute, what, what's Chet doing? Sterling is on the ropes, coach behind him. Oh! Hey. <laughs> right in front of referee Charles Richardson, he saw the fall, he saw the effect, but not the cause. Wait a minute. That, what an excellent use of space there by the coach. Like it or not, that was a great move from the coach. It was as dirty as weak old laundry, but it was a great move on the part of the coach. Referee had his back turned. All the referee saw was Chet Sterling fall at his feet. We have seen guys fall off the ropes before as officials, and again, if you don't see it, you can't call it. And right now, these guys are taking it to the street, so to speak. Very unusual to see the Ultra J Championship, a title. Oh, the coach getting another cheap shot in. The coach getting another cheap shot in. I was gonna say, very unusual to see the Ultra J Championship break down into a fight on the floor. These are typically fast-paced matches. These are typically a lot of high-impact wrestling, stuff off the top rope, aerial offense. And Roy Wilkins, if he leaves here as the Ultra J Champion, you think of him as a technical wrestler, but he could change the complexion of this title, bringing his technical wrestling game into the mix or bringing his brawling into the mix. And it's a little unlike Chet Sterling, but I just realized this too. He's got 30 minutes. He's got 30 minutes to either defend this title or 30 minutes to lose it. Is it in his best interest with the difference of, of health, I guess you would say right now? Is it, is it wise for Chet Sterling to kind of ride the clock out? I think if, I'm, if, if he is in fact beat up, if he is in fact feeling the crunch of all these physical matches, I would try to get it over as quickly as possible. I would not try to play to the clock. Wilkins, for all the reasons that we've talked about, his reduced schedule, his cardiovascular conditioning, his private training sessions that he conducts with Ethan Alexander Sharp and a handful of others, Wilkins is in great ring shape at all times. So if I'm Chet Sterling, I don't try to ride out the clock. I try to try quite the opposite. I try to wrap it up. Well, and, and, and I didn't want, I didn't want to make it seem like Roy Wilkins is at a disadvantage because of all that time off. Because with that time off, he has the opportunity to be in the gym more, to up his training. Cover. And with Chet being constantly on the road, he has more of a teardown system you're, in his body when it comes to a buildup because punching. of so many matches, so much impact. Yeah. So Great thinking on the part of the technical wizard. Sterling was swinging the fist, and Wilkins turned it right into the abdominal stretch. I think that plays into what we were talking about, Kevin Pierce. Wilkins appears to be in sharper ring shape than Sterling right now. 
This move right here is simple, but it's effective. It's gonna wear him out. It's gonna restrict the flow of oxygen into his body and stretch out all the muscles around that rib cage. So from here on in, for the rest of this match, Chet will not be breathing the same. Something as simple as that, all the air, all the wind rushes out of you as soon as you hit that canvas. Oh, Wilkins! Wow. Wilkins has out-wrestled Sterling and he has out-fought Sterling thus far in this matchup. Coach, I want to bring you in. Coach, I want to bring you in real quick. I, I got to hand it to you. Thus far, Wilkins has out-wrestled Sterling and he has out-fought Sterling. Sterling does not seem like himself in this championship matchup, but your man Roy Wilkins seems A-plus primed and ready tonight. That's because Roy is the greatest of all time. He's the greatest technical wrestler alive today. There's no question about it. Chet is out-schooled right now. Roy's going to take this title. We're going to be Ultra J cha champion. Then we're going to take that heavyweight title from Trevor. The coach steps in and out as he gets back to his corner as he sees Sterling swinging away. I gotta be honest, Sterling does not seem like himself. He seems a little off, a little tentative. Oh, Sterling hit the middle rope. Great use of momentum there by Roy Wilkins. He forced himself out of the ring and in turn forced Chet Sterling to come with him and get all of that suspension from the ropes right in the stomach of Chet Sterling. A lot of times when guys wrestle hurt, you see that from them. You see that tentativeness. You see, uh, you know, they change their style. They're less willing to take risks. They're more conservative with their bodies. Chet Sterling, I've said it before and I will say it again, Chet Sterling is not himself tonight. And that is not, not, not a good idea just days before Battlecade as the coach continues to manipulate the official. Sterling has fought from underneath almost this entire matchup, and again, back of the head. Wilkins caught him again. Figure four, figure four. Gets a it. great wrestling hold right in the middle of the ring. Gets into the ring. Great ring positioning there by the masterful Roy Wilkins here. Chet has no other choice other than getting out of this move or somehow maneuvering his way toward the ropes and or tapping out. Those are his three ways out right now. Once again, for our new viewers or maybe our first time viewers. Chet Sterling was pile driven by Lee Valiant just weeks ago. He was stretched out of the Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium as the pile driver hold is illegal in CWF Mid-Atlantic. Then, just what, weeks later, he was brutalized in a nationally televised bout against Jeff Hardy. Sterling, oh, shoulders are down! Oh. Sterling is feeling the effects of a grueling, grueling schedule. Referee Charles Richardson finally caught the coach and he is gonna make Wilkins break the hold. Sterling is feeling the effects of a grueling schedule and we may see a new champion tonight in Matthews and that would shake up Battle Cade tremendously. I think that that pile driver from Lee Valiant did a lot more damage than Chet wants to let on. I remember asking him about it a couple of weeks later and he kind of brushed it off. He didn't want to talk about it. He's trying to keep it out of his mind. The main thing he's got on his mind right now is Roy Wilkins and walking into Battle Cade as the International Ultra J Champion. Yeah, that's a brutal move. You're, you're upside down. You're dropped on your head and neck. Oh, he hit the buckle right in front of us, folks. That's you're not going to do that neck any, day, any, any favors. When you're in that pile driver hold, oh dear. Oh, shining wizard, but he missed him. I thought Wilkins was going to come right into our laps. Wilkins, shining wizard, but he missed him. He soared into the buckle hard. Did you see the force he hit that mat with? STO. Chet's, Chet's going to double it up. Both men are down. Champion. All Chet's going to do his cover. And challenger are down here. This could be it. from Sterling, but it only got two. He cannot let his confidence get rattled. Can Chet Sterling, he has got to stay in this championship bout. Those few seconds, those few precious seconds that Chet wasn't able to make that cover could have definitely helped him. And I think he's going to try and finish Wilkins off, but Wilkins is trying to reverse it. Wait a minute, what do we got here? This is crushing, boy, crushing, crushing. Here he goes out. Wilkins, ace card, his 
despite the best efforts of the coach, Sterling made the ropes. Wilkins is going right back, right back to the legs. The challenger is torturing the champion here. Kevin Pierce, Battle Cade could be shook up completely if Roy Wilkins leaves the Ultra J champion. Again, Nick Richards stands to gain a lot. Lee Valiant stands to lose a lot. And of course, Chet Sterling stands to lose more than anyone. Another cheap shot from the coach. They have done a masterful, masterful job of manipulating this official. Chet not only has to contend with Roy Wilkins, which is enough in and of itself, but then you throw the coach in on top of it, it's got to be almost impossible. Now, the Cincinnati Destroyer will be a disqualification. That's a version of the pile driver, you're right. The Cincinnati Destroyer will be a disqualification. What is your man thinking, coach? Whoa, Sterling is trying to fight out of it. He's got to support all the weight on that neck, though. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. Oh, that oh, right. on him. Smart move. Two, got him. Right. Just that quick. Just that quick. Chet Sterling survives. Just that quickly, Chet Sterling survives. 16 minutes, 20 seconds. The world by pinfall and still PWI International Ultra J Crown Champion, Chet for Battlecade because you know what I got dropped on my head by that scumbag Lee Valiant and then I got chopped up by some guy with a weed whacker you know what people have been trying to cripple me for months around here and come Battlecade it doesn't matter if I'm 100% or not because if I've got to be dragged in there by you I don't care if you've got to drag me in there Chrissy it doesn't matter Lee Valiant because of Battlecade I'm not leaving the cripple you're leaving the cripple